woke liberals are making race relations worse. The good news is, have you noticed that race relations comes down to this? How black people feel about white people and how white people feel about how black people feel about white people? I was in the Phoenix airport the other day, walking through, this is real early in the morning, I had a couple hours to kill, and a young white man came walking towards me wearing a black t-shirt with white lettering that read, protect black women. Now both of us were wearing a mask, but I couldn't help it. I went up to him and I said, excuse me, may I ask you something? How is it that black women are not protected? He seemed a little taken it back at first, and then he said, well, uh, you know, in every way. I said, in what way? He said, in every way. I said, well, if it's in every way, it should be easy for you to tell me one way, tell me one way black women aren't protected. And he said, well, they're not paid the same. I said, they're not paid the same as white women? He said, yeah. I said, we're doing the same work? He said, yeah. I said, why does any white woman have a job? He said, what do you mean? I said, if I'm an employer and I have white women and I can hire black women for less money and they'll be equally productive, why wouldn't I fire all the white women and hire just black women? And he went, well, um, that would be illegal. I said, since the 60s, it's been illegal to pay somebody unequally for the same work. I said, what you're saying is just not true. The Department of Labor did a study on this, and when you compare apples to apples, women versus men who have the same educational background, same work experience, there is virtually no difference in their income. In fact, young women out-earn young, young men in almost every major city. And he started walking away, and he said, you know, I really don't want to have this conversation right now. I said, maybe next time, a different T-shirt. I asked the man for some evidence. Where was it? If the defense wishes, he may question the witness and bring out his side of the case. No questions. What the hell is systemic racism? And if it's so obvious, so widespread, so pervasive, how nobody seems to be able to come up with any proof? Remember Cedric Richmond, the black congressman who told A.G. Bill Barr he was engaged in systematic racism? Attorney General Barr, you started your testimony with eloquent words about the life and legacy of John Lewis fighting systematic racism, uh, voter intimidation, civil rights. Uh, the one thing that you have in common with your two predecessors, both Attorney General Sessions and Attorney General Whitaker, is that when you all came here and brought your top staff, you brought no black people. That, sir, is systematic racism. That is exactly what John Lewis spent his life uh, fighting. And so I would just suggest uh, that actions speak louder than words. And you should really should keep the name of the Honorable John Lewis out of the Department of Justice's uh, mouth. Well, Harvey Levin of TMZ and I had a pretty feisty conversation in which he argued that President Trump was essentially being racist for not recognizing systemic racism. The conversation started out okay, but it went south pretty fast. At the same time, Donald Trump is touting that he feels he is, has been better for um, African Americans than anybody except possibly Abraham Lincoln. Possibly. And, he, and he's trying to um, paint a fairly rosy picture of what it's like for black people in America under his tutelage. So how do you square the two? This man is doing something about the economy before the coronavirus pandemic, historically low unemployment. The man has signed the First Step Act, which allowed some, something like 5,000 mostly black men to have their sentences reconsidered and reduced an average of about 75 months. He's also spent more money on enterprise zones. He's put funding on HBCUs for the first time of over a period of 10 years. No one's ever done Larry, that before. The president is also saying that there is no systemic racism in America, there is no systemic racism in policing. And there isn't. there isn't. Okay. All right. There is no evidence of systemic racism whatsoever. In fact, the evidence shows the opposite. I was just about ready to say there's a black Harvard professor named Roland Fryer who assumed, just as you did, that the police were killing blacks just because they were black. He did a study. Not only did he not find it, he found out, which tracked other studies, the police are more hesitant, more reluctant to pull the trigger on a black suspect than on a white suspect. And it's common sense because of people like people in the media who immediately assume that a cop is doing something racist or motivated because the victim is black. They're afraid to shoot a black person much greater than they are afraid to shoot a white person. Larry, Larry, you're from Los Angeles, and you know what happened with the Rampart Division. It was an incredible scandal where they were going into the inner city, and they were 
They were they were setting people up and planting drugs and doing all this stuff. I mean, this has been going Harvey, on for a long time. Harvey, Harvey, 20 years ago, from 1992 to 2002, Los Angeles had back-to-back -back black police chiefs, even during the O.J. Simpson case. And what happened? Willie but Williams, that doesn't mean but that but, doesn't but, mean but that you're, doesn't you're make it go away, Larry. This you're, you can't look at a black police chief and say, therefore, there isn't systemic racism. Right. We had a black president. Is there no racism in America then, Larry? I mean, uh, come on. You got, first, you said systemic racism. Now you're saying racism. Which one do you want? No, I'm saying there's no, I, I'm there's no, there's no evidence. Systemic. There's no evidence whatsoever of systemic racism. I ask you to prove okay. it. A, a, a cop watching somebody run away, a black man run away, shooting him and killing him. A guy walking into a convenience store, shooting him and killing him. I, you know, Larry, we've seen this. Okay, I, here's the thing. I, I, Larry, I, the, I, 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 I hear what you're saying about the Harvey, studies. Harvey, let me, let, me try, let me try it this way. There are 50 million police civilian interactions every single year. Out of that 50 million, there are 11 million arrests. Out of that 11 million arrests, 60,000 officers are assaulted. Out of all of that, 1,000 civilians are killed. Half of them are white, 250 of them were black. Almost all of them were resisting with the weapon or resisting violently. When you get down to unarmed black men being shot by white cops, you're talking about less than 4% of the total. And unarmed does not mean not dangerous. Michael Brown was unarmed, but he was reasonably perceived as dangerous. It is rare, Harvey, you guys are exaggerating this. When a white person gets killed by a cop, nobody gives a damn. When a black person gets killed by a cop, people are out in the streets. And in Philadelphia, you're talking about a city where the police, where the police, where the uh, captain of the city council is black. Almost every single member of city council is a Democrat. They've had, they've had black mayors. The police chief is a black female. And you're still talking about systemic racism? It's ridiculous. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, really. You're making the country well, okay. work. We actually, I'm making I'm the like, country Hey, Larry, Larry. I'm making the country work. Hang on a second. I just, I just I, Larry, I'm going to be very Larry. clear about something. Hold on, I'm hold on, Charles. I sleep I just am not ashamed of myself. And maybe you do too, and that's yeah. fine. So we're going to disagree on this. Maybe you should be. Maybe you should be, Larry. Because there is a the facts problem. Are on my side, the facts, there is the facts a are problem on my side, in this country, and side, you are Jesus. relying on statistics, and you are not looking at humanity. It's called Larry. facts. It's called facts. Did he really say you are relying on statistics, not looking at humanity? You Jesus. are relying on statistics, and you are not looking at humanity. It's called Larry. facts. He sure did. All the humanity. Democrats are really, really big on humanity. You know. Living with the knowledge that no matter how hard we try, how much good we do in the world, there will be far too many who will never see our humanity. <laughs> but when Trump reached out to blacks, you know, humanity to humanity, what happened? It, it, it was Listen, a bunch of mediocre it, when, Negroes being dragged in front of TV as a photo op for Donald Trump's exploitative campaign against black people. And when a congressman brought during a hearing a black female employee of Donald Trump, to show that Donald Trump was not racist, he was accused of bringing a prop. And when Kanye West was invited to the Oval Office and went and embraced and supported President Trump, Don Lamont called him a minstrel show. I, listen, I don't, there, I have no animosity for um, Kanye West. I'm just gonna be honest, and I may get in a lot of trouble for it. I feel, actually feel bad for him. What I saw was a minstrel show today him in front of all of these white people, mostly white people, embarrassing himself and embarrassing Americans, but mostly African Americans, because every, every one of them is sitting either at home or with their phones watching this, cringing. I couldn't even watch it. I had to turn the television off because it was so hard to watch. So if you don't bring a black person to a hearing, you're guilty of systematic racism. And if you do, well, You've engaged in a minstrel show. <laughs> Can't win. Ah! You know, this sort of thing happens when you ask people who are just convinced about systemic racism, institutional racism, structural racism, for some facts. Here's what happens. Because black people, in most cases, in many cases, were descendants of slaves, that racism as, a, as an institution, that it just, in a certain amount of it just exists. In 2015? I, it, that give, give me the most blatant racist example you can come up with right now. Um, I think you could probably find evidence that, in general, cops are, that, that cops are more willing 
to shoot if the uh, perpetrator is black What's your data? than white. What's your basis for saying that? L last year... The well, look, I know a lot of people would say, look what's going on in Chicago. I, I, I know what they would say. Yeah. I'm talking about what the facts are. 965 people were shot by cops last, uh, last year and killed. 4% of them were white cops shooting unarmed blacks. In, in Chicago in 2011, 21 people were shot and killed by cops. Uh, in 2015, there were seven. Uh, in Chicago, which is a third black, a third white, and a third Hispanic, 70% of the homicides are black on black. Uh, about 40 per month, almost 500 uh, in the year, per year, last year in Chicago, and 75% of them are unsolved. Where is the Black Lives Matter on that? The idea that a racist white cop uh, and shooting unarmed black people is a peril to black people is BS. It's yeah. complete and total BS. And, and the reason for these so-called activists saying this is the assumption that racism remains a major problem in America. The media, CNN, especially MSNBC, runs down whenever a black cop shoots somebody, uh, and, it, and it's a, some, some march on Washington. It's ridiculous. Uh, black people, half the homicides in this country are committed by and against black people. Last year, there were 14,000 homicides, I'm not talking about suicides, I'm talking about homicides. Mm -hmm. Um, half of them were black, 96% of them black on black of that 7,000. Where's the black, black Lives Matter people on that? Finally, if you have any doubt about which side is more empathetic than the other, consider this delightful phone call that I received from, let's call him a swing voter. You one ignorant, stupid mother Them big flapping lips of yours remind me of Charlotte, you stupid I have never seen a mother is you, you Trump licking mother you. What a disgrace you are, you ignorant mother. Lou Dobbs, you lick his asshole. You are dirty, nasty, stinking, big lip mother. Something tells me I'm not in the will. I'm Larry Elder, and we've got a country to save. I'll see you next time.